Good morning. Welcome to Hively Avenue Mennonite Church. It's lovely to hear all the lively voices this morning, despite the grayish uh, weather outside. Good to see everyone here. For those that are around our round tables this morning and also joining us um, on YouTube, possibly later, welcome to this space. Just a few announcements to get us kick-started. If you have your bulletins, you're welcome to look in there. I won't highlight all of them, but for those of you that are interested in um, joining the group that is going to be gathering for uh, helping possibly with future music songs from Voices Together, um, please gather from Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoons, noon to 1 o'clock around the piano um, after our worship and Sunday school time. Uh, also, there's a Witness and Caring survey that you should have received in your uh, email. If you haven't seen that, let us know, but please uh, check that out and get that filled out and returned to us so that we can have an idea of what sorts of spiritual practices or um, spiritual community folks are looking for this fall. Also, there's an uh, announcement about the old hymnal worship books, or old blue hymnals. Uh, if you'd like to have one of those, uh, apparently we have them out in the hallway on carts. Feel free to grab one on your way out, and that can be yours. And then lastly, if you are interested in a mediation training through the Center for Community Justice, my old workplace, uh, I would strongly encourage you to sign up for that. This is October 28th, 29th, and 30th, um, helping with mediation skills and good conflict resolution skills. So please consider signing up for that. With that aside, we welcome you to this space. Again, we continue on in our series on soul force, pivoting from uh, one thing to another. This past week, we were pivoting from consumerism to uh, creativity. And so if you'll look uh, down here at our uh, sort of worship table, you'll see a beautiful assortment of creative creations and artwork from folks in our congregation, uh, representing things from music, to scholarship, uh, to children's literature, to photography, uh, to uh, kitchen wares, everything you can imagine. There's uh, creativity flowing from our congregation. So if you have time later, feel free to come up and uh, look at the table and what is represented here in the creativity of folks from our congregation. But please join me in our call to worship this morning, this comes from our Voices Together, the hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. And though we have it printed in our bulletins, you're welcome to read from that. I would encourage you actually to look in your Voices Together hymnal because on the uh, joining page of that hymn is a beautiful picture from our very own Tyler Clausen. Uh, it looks like a kind of a farm, foggy farm uh, landscape with a beautiful sunrise. I wish we could see it in color, but even the, the black and white is pretty breathtaking. So please follow with me as we read through this first bit together. I sing the mighty power of God that spread the flowing seas abroad I sing the wisdom that ordained. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. And from Isaiah 40, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands? Or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales or the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord? Please join us together as Ed will be leading us in Voices Together 180. This is God's wondrous world. And in case this is one of those hymns that you think you know the words, look at the book because some of the words have changed from what you may be familiar with.
436. Number 436, we will sing verses 1 and 2. Peace Candle this morning, I wanted to draw our attention to a recent publication that came out um, that I've been really excited to read and connects well with our land acknowledgement that we have often printed in our bulletin, recognizing um, the place that our spaces take in the spaces of the First Nations people of this nation and of Canada as well. So they recently put out a First Nations version of the New Testament which is uh, in English, but in sort of an indigenous cultural translation of uh, the New Testament, sort of in the vernacular and in the storytelling style of the First Nations people. Uh, so it's a very uh, beautiful rendering. There's a um, sort of a collection of uh, tribal leaders that were a part of this project. Uh, one of them, it looks like, was from the local Pokagon band of the Potawatomi, one of our local tribes. So I would encourage you to consider uh, looking at this as we consider our spaces, um, the places that we take in this land, and um, who has inhabited this land far longer than we have. Uh, and this is just kind of a beautiful reminder of God's piece of how uh, this language in some ways was sort of forced upon many of the First Nations people, and yet they're sort of reappropriating that language uh, to retranslate it into their own vernacular and storytelling style to bring the, the good news or the way of, of Jesus. Um, God's peace come near is who they call him. So I wanted to read just uh, one short passage, which is our passage from today, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, uh, from this translation as we light the peace candle together. And this is the title of Ephesians in this translation is small man, which is what they call Paul, small man to the sacred family in village of desire. It is by trusting in the gift of his great kindness that we have been made whole. It is not because of any good thing we have done, but only by accepting a gift that we could never earn. In this way, no one can brag or boast about themselves, but only humbly give thanks. We are like clay in his hands, molded from the chosen one, made to be like him, and walking the ancient pathways he originally created for us. So as we light the peace candle, please recite with me, God of peace. Christ of peace, 
as a reminder of our calling. Again, Ed will be leading us now in Voices Together 120 for the beauty of the earth. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. 1, 2, and 5. 120. Please hear this confession this morning. Our lives are cluttered, Lord Jesus, by too many things and too much to do. We are driven by the need to succeed and distracted by our service. We have often lost our way Forgive us. Let us, like Mary, find the one thing that is needed and sit at your feet. Amen. And here also these words of assurance. Forgiving God, you do not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love toward those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far you remove our transgressions from us. May those words of assurance seep into your bones and into your heart. We now invite the children to come forward, and Elaine has our children's time this morning, so kiddos, come on up. morning. You look pretty tired. <laughs> Did you party too hard last night? <laughs> well, last Sunday, Pastor Jake talked about creativity. And those of you that were here, remember, he talked about how God created us each uniquely, and that we can move our hands and our fingers and we don't have to think about it. We don't think, now finger, move. Or now foot, move. It just does it. does what we want it to do. And that's what's so wonderful about how God made us. On the table here, I thought he was going to steal my thunder. On the table, I want you to stand up here so you can see. 
There's all kinds of things that people in this church made. Here is a cute little dress. No, let's not touch the violin, okay? Um, there's a dress that uh, Trish Habegger made for Tyler and Mary's granddaughter. And here's a picture that Crystal Underwood made. I'm not going to be able to say again what that word is, but it's Sharon something or other, where she takes a scissors and cuts out, a real sharp scissors and cuts out pictures. And here's some little socks that Lindsay made and some books that Judy Roth authored. And we've got a picture there that Tyler made. And this is uh, Joyce Odiembo's violin. And here is a towel. She makes those towels and sells them. And look at that beautiful bowl that um, Leroy made. And there's a book there by Walter Sawatsky and that cute little doll that Mary made. And I put some flowers here to represent all the gardeners and, this, and the vegetable people, people that raise vegetables. And there's lots and lots of people in our congregation that do knitting and are into music and into books. And so I wanted you to see some of the things that the congregation makes. And I have a story I want to read you. This book is called Hooray for You. And it's got beautiful pictures in it. For quite a long time, the world saved a place. Millions were born, yet none filled your space. Until the second of a minute of one special day, you took your first breath, and the world said, hooray! Perfectly timed, not one minute more. You suddenly were where you were not before. But planning preceded your earthly de debut, as all was completed in the Eunice of you. Eunice, you ask, quite hard to describe. It's your style of being, your rhythm and vibe. It's the grand sum of you that sets you apart, your body and brains plus your spirit and heart. Okay, you might think, but I'm not sure I see why the big fuss and hooray about me. Then get set to enjoy the big celebration of the Eunice of you, a remarkable creation. Isn't it something that your wonderful face is not like another in the whole human race? Your smile, for starters, curves up just so when you laugh and act silly or tell jokes that you know. The body you live in can jump, dance, and play with custom-built parts to move your own way. Even your hair, be it black, brown, or red, does its own thing on the top of your head. And your certain good looks are just one teensy part of the Eunice galore of your mind and your heart. This is the essence of what you're about, the true who of you within and without. For instance, the way your brain likes to think, it just happens, you say, like a sneeze or a blink. Automatic for sure, but predictable not. For no other has your process of thought. You think big ideas and original schemes. Your wide-eyed wishes are your dreamiest dreams. And your feelings go deep. Your feelings deep down are colorful creations, a kaleidoscope of moods and emotional sensations. Who else can know your kind of glad, silly, excited, grumpy, or sad? There are foods you find yummy, a favorite color or two, things you don't like, but more that you do. And the cool thing that's true is how you can grow where there's thinking to change and new stuff to know. 
You're perfect as you, but my friend, you will see days when delighted is not what you'll be. You might even think, I'd sure wish to be like him or her or them, any person but me. Then stop that at once. Put gloom on the shelf. Say goodbye doubt and hooray for self. If people compare you with another like a mother or sister or uncle or brother, to them you can say for certain indeed, I'm completely for sure me guaranteed. Yes, from head to tip toe, toe tip, you're truly original, a creation in process, distinct individual. Look at the world, look the world over, and you'll never find a duplicate of you-ness that's your one of a kind. On the day you were born, the world grew by one. Life with big purpose and much to be done. Look in the mirror. Love who you see. Stand tall. Smile big. Shout, hooray for me. Now I want you all to stand up. And I want everybody in the congregation that can to stand up. And we're going to shout, hooray for me. (laughs) Hooray for me. Okay, you can go back to your seats. I'll be reading our scripture verses today. So from Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10, it says this. For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And in Spanish, de Efesios, capítulo 2, versículos 8 hasta 10. ¿Por qué por gracia ustedes han sido salvados mediante la fe? Esto no procede de ustedes, sino que es el regalo de Dios. No por obras para que nadie se jacte. Porque somos hechura de Dios, creados en en Cristo Jesús para buenas obras, las cuales Dios dispuso de antemano a fin de que las pongamos en práctica. La palabra de Dios. For you are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. This is the backdrop of our discussion time today. Uh, As we have been doing in our series, we'll do one week of a sermon and then the next week of a discussion time related to that theme of the sermon. So today we're going to have kind of a discussion time around this pivot from consumption to creativity. And I wanted to read um, just a passage from the book Soul Force, which is kind of, again, the backdrop for our, our sermons and our discussions during this series. They say this, as co-creators with God, we get to write our story with God. When we allow ourselves to become passive consumers, and here's the important thing, this is what happens when we become consumers, we reflect an inaccurate picture of God and also miss out on the creative potential and purposes of our lives with God. So it's not so much the the thing of consumption itself, but what it creates in us is that we create uh, an inaccurate picture of who God is and we lose out on the creative purposes of God for us. So with that in our minds and in our hearts and in the background, I invite you in your table groups, if you have a smaller table and would like to join up with another one, you are more than welcome to. Uh, If you would like to stay small, that is fine too. But we will divide you up into your uh, table groups. You have the the sheets there to reflect on. And if each table could choose uh, maybe one recorder who would be willing to share with us uh, at the end uh, some of the reflections from your table. But this is what we will be reflecting on this morning. The first set of questions are these. In what ways have you been blessed by the God-given creativity of others? So in what ways have you experienced blessing through the creativity of others? 
And in what ways have you blessed others through your God-given creativity? So how have you received blessing? How have you given blessing? And then the second question is this. In our communal, congregational context, how might creativity become a more central part of our congregational identity, both inside and outside of our walls? How might it become more of our identity? And I would like to draw attention, too, also to this little quote in black, if you see it there, in between. I found this to be a really powerful point as, as the um, authors of Soul Force were reflecting on sometimes our, our desire to live a more simple lifestyle and how sometimes we can start to feel uh, guilty or compare ourselves to others and do the uh, who lives more simply than others game. Uh, they, he said this, instead of feeling perpetually guilty, seek what the spirit of grace and freedom is leading you toward. So what feels most freeing rather than most obligatory? So what feels most freeing? That's the, the whole point of living into God's creativity is to be freed from something. So if, you're, if your simple living starts to feel more guilt-ridden and more like a prison than, than freeing, then maybe it's uh, time to reevaluate <laughs> that, that form of simple living. So what feels most freeing rather than most obligatory? All right, we will give everyone about... 15 to 20 minutes to reflect in your table groups on these questions. Partway through, I might uh, give you kind of a halfway marker if you want to pivot to the second question and haven't already been there. But we welcome you to uh, discuss at this time.